said, I went on Anc- I went on Ancestry. I'm going to get through it. I'm gonna, I went on Ancestry.com and I found out my great grandfather was born a businessman and died a slave. <laughs> And that was a slave, worth, a slave and that was worth finding out. Like that, then I'd go, "Wow! Like what happened in this man's life? We had a he nice really, haberdashery he, yeah, and he, in St. Louis, so quickly. and then somehow he just wound up in shackles, throwing a pitchfork around out in the field. It's, it's horrendous in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Like well, how did he fuck that up? Yeah, yeah. He and had it's, had a great grandfather. Now, yeah. it's a great grandfather. So it's like 1918. Like there wasn't even slavery. No. This is the most fascinating website of all time. Who's slave? What? Like who owns slaves then? <laughs> no one. Yeah. We get obsessed like with the ones if we were on like SNL as a writing team. Like I went on Ancestry.com. <laughs> <laughs> we get nuts. And I found out. Uh, first of all, the, someone there should be a prank where somebody goes on Ancestry.com and they're the they're the first person. They said that they were the first person. No, like they go, yeah, there's no, like the family tree, you like have, you're, you, you, you are the you acorn are the, that's sprouted. You're, yes, you're the seed here. And then you're, that's like. They just show you, your kids, just you and your kids. And you're like, well, what the fuck are my parents? You can't find records you, of your you parents. You go to call them, they don't pick up. All of a sudden it turns into like a weird David Fincher movie. Or yeah, they yeah. do pick up. <laughs> You've been hatched. And you're like, but I'm, and it's your parents' word versus data on the internet. Da- actual data. Yeah, because as we know, the internet never lies. Yeah, the internet never lies. That's what I like about the internet. There's never lying and there's never uh, a lot of opinions or negativity. I love your quote about opinions. Opinions are like assholes. Uh, everybody's got one, and everybody wants you to sniff it. All right. No, I, I, like, I like the second one. Everyone has assholes, and they always want to show them to me. <laughs> that was your original one. Oh, Opinions are like oh. assholes. Everyone's got one, and they always want to show it to me. I found out that my aunt lived next to the Wright brothers. and then like Who this, forgot to tell me this? The, yeah, the like, sense of awe and wonder. <laughs> Like, <laughs> the most important thing about her life is that her fucking aunt lived next to the Wright brothers, yeah. But, have you seen footage of the Wright brothers? There's like a lot of open space. Like, next door, it's not, they make it sound like it's row houses in Staten Island where like fucking oh, ghost I, face sure lives and the goddies. You were two states over. Yeah, yeah, like there was enough room with to fly. Other, with that other dude's freaking ancestors out in the fields. There's another, there was enough space to fly a fucking plane <laughs> as a test run. <laughs> like now you know exactly how the plane works. So you go, I'm going to take off from Santa Monica Airport right over the houses. I'll loop back around. But you needed enough field and space to go, we don't know where the fuck this is going to go. Hey, is that our neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> Who forgot to tell me that? I went on Ancestry.com and I found out my great-grandfather was the Indianapolis Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, what if you find out something hideous? Who forgot like, to tell I, me? I found out that my great uncle was Ed Gein. Who Ed forgot Gein. to tell me that? Nice pull. Yeah, there should be like, I mean, that, I would much rather find that out well, than that find would be out interesting. who my fucking great grandparents' and neighbors were. Like, who gives a shit? They live next door to Ray Bolger from The Wizard of Oz. No. I mean, I don't know how that didn't come off at Christmas time. I don't know why I said that like Brian Regan. Yeah. <laughs> they live next door to the Scarecrow. <laughs> so we had a big year. It was 2011, and we're going to do our year in review. Uh, Time Magazine said their person of the year was the protester, which I take umbrage with because I don't think a group of people can be person of the year. You have to change – they at least change it to people of the year, right? In my estimation, the nomenclature is incorrect. It should, it should, it should in, indeed be – People of the year, person of the year should be a, an individual. Although, as uh, I said earlier, uh, when we were speaking with uh, Mike, I would say uh, the Navy SEALs, uh, SEAL Team Six, they would be my people of the year. I, I don't have an individual. How, you know, you and I get hung up. It on- would be SEAL Team Six or or the Kardashians. The Kardashians. You know what? It's a it's a good joke, but when you think about it, they got more press. We know could, we know we they, we know what they all look like. They if you wow, you know what? It would be like an absolute joke to see them on Time Magazine. But what better representation of the sloppy glop of shit that American society has become? Than Wasn't the, that Conan's joke when uh, Barbara Walters interviewed Kim Kardashian as one of the ten most interesting people of the year? And Conan said, which proves that uh, Barbara Walters is 
very easily intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see yeah. it. <laughs> but the Kardashians, they really could go down as person of the year. Like, this is a fascinating group of fucking people. You got the big one who seems real funny, and she's married to Lamar. Now she's, like, living in Dallas going, uh-oh. <laughs> and then you got the little one that looks straight Persian. Like, she just looks like a Persian girl like you would just see in, like, Glendale. And then you got the big, fat, hairy monster, Kim, uh, who just – like, what the fuck? And Chris... Well, when their marriage didn't work out. I mean, my parents celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary a few days ago. You and I, honey, are about to have our fifth, and I, I love you more now than I did the day we got married. But when you hear about uh, Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphrey's marriage not working out, it really shakes my faith in the institution of marriage. If those two crazy kids can't make it work... Who has a chance? Why do you think she picked Chris Humphrey's? He's not attractive. He's not all black. He's kind of black. Like she has a type. Athlete, African-American athlete is obviously her type. And she went top shelf. Like Reggie Bush was like the mayor of L.A. when he was at SC. Like we did, And now he's coming into his own again in the NFL. And then like Miles Austin, I think. like that's She wasn't so picky at first though because Ray J was just Moesha's brother. He wasn't a professional athlete, right? That's true. Like that's like having a sex tape with Frank Stallone. Yeah, that was the thing that broke her. Was Ray J? Oh, it broke her. All yeah, right. I mean, you see the fucking have, crank I, on that I guy. I would be so happy if I had a sex tape with Frank Stallone. I would show everyone I knew. I were going to say I Ray J. Show, I was like, I, I would not no, be happy, would be about, happy that about that at all. Frank Stallone. I would be thrilled. I would show my dad, just because it's that's hilarious. That's good stuff. You mean the actor, the bartender from Barfly, Frank Stallone, the singer? Is there any other? Yeah. The, the one and only. You, Nick wrote a great joke for me when I was on the Tonight Show. She goes, Kim Kardashian, uh, when she was getting married, what do you get the girl that does nothing? <laughs> and then, like, you realize, I was, I got asked to be on by the great Tracy Fiss, who we love so much. Uh, she's a producer over at Tonight Show. And Jay Leno, by the way, everybody has agreed to be on the podcast, just waiting for a perfect time. Uh, and Tracy Fiss sent me an email, said, Thanksgiving show, it's the Kardashians and you. Could you do the second spot? And I thought back to when I was on with Justin Bieber, and I was so nice. He, he was kind of a fucking dick to me when I watch it. I'm like, wow, this kid like took like five shot, like direct this shots. Six, yeah, he was really aiming. And I could have literally just turned to him and like, look, Rachel Maddow. <laughs> like when you, you know. I wish you just like your put your hand is, on his head and just like ha- just made him like – kick and punch at nothing at air yeah like you do like <laughs> yeah. your nephews yeah i'd say like when you're done peeing on your balls i want you know whatever I, I could have just annihilated them and then i just and nick's the one that told me like kill him with kindness you cannot possibly make fun of justin bieber just he's a he, child he's, he's beloved 15 yeah. for crying out loud but uh so then i was like oh if i go on with the kardashians i will have an inability to be kind i and i told tracy fiss uh, the producer, uh, one of the producers of the Tonight Show, I said, "I'm going to fucking destroy them. It's your call." And she said, "Thanks for being honest. Let me run it up the flagpole." Because I was just going to sit down and go, "Which one of you had sex with most deaf? Which one <laughs> of you guys? Who had this? Who did the porno?" And I was just going to name like, "Who did the porno with Biz Marquee? Was that? Are you the big one? Who's in? Who's having sex with Derek Fisher? Who did the porno with Biz Marquee?" And which one looks Armenian? Which, okay, time out. And I was just going to keep going what back. What do you do? Yeah, like you have a new fragrance out. What does it smell like? You know, I, I know everything was too dirty. But I was going <laughs> to annihilate. I was going to make my – Sloth. I was gonna, it smells like sloth. It smells like <laughs> sloth. <laughs> I was going to make gluttony. a name for myself. What, and gluttony? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely gluttony. I was going to make a name for myself for killing the Kardashians on The Tonight Show. And then she got back but to it, me yeah, very nicely yeah, and but said, see, it, don't. That starts with the case. So you could have had your own show on E. Killing the killing Kardashians. The Kardashians. They could, you know what? They might be. Per- My person of the year is probably Blake Griffin. And why? you're looking at me like, why? Why are you backing it up? Yeah, yeah. The basketball player, right? Who does he play for? I, I'm, I'm a pothead. I don't. I haven't watched a sporting event in. You a don't long smoke grass and watch basketball? Nah, dude. You don't know what you're missing. I watch smoke grass. Watch cartoons. <laughs> I watch Pro Stars. They have the, the cartoon with Wayne Gretzky and uh, <laughs> Bo Derek. Do you watch any sports? Are you familiar no. with any sports? I, I used to when I was younger. I played lacrosse and football in high school, but honestly, but like if you watch like a Packers Giants game, you don't know who. The I don't guys. know a single professional oh. athlete in any sporting. Uh, and, and until we league. were married, I was I was 
pretty naive to all all things. Athletic. But you watched more sports when we got married. You were way more into like watching fights. Like we, when we first started, I still love watching Friday fights. night fights. We watched almost no, every I, Friday. I still, I still I have always Teddy loved, Atlas. I've, I love Teddy. Atlas. Is there any water around here? This, this is a P one brawl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm all for a good bloodletting. But, be it be at the MMA or you know the UFC or actual you know boxing. I just I I do like fights. No, I don't watch this stuff. The names can't help. I, I've heard of Tim Tebow. I don't know what he does or who he is, but Crazy I know it. Blake Griffin. I've he's heard. known for what he doesn't do. Okay. So why Blake Griffin is your is your because he's a cli- I thought you were going to go. He plays for the Clippers. I was going. No one in the history of the Clipper franchise has been able to elicit that response. Who's he play for? The Clippers. Oh, is he because really? they're the clip. Yeah. They're the worst. Worst. They're the Washington Generals, and the rest <laughs> of the league are the Harlem Globetrotters. And now suddenly the Clippers are not, as my wife would say, a divorced dad destination. She goes. I used to have Clipper season tickets. Uh, and we used to go all the time and she'd be like, oh, it's Clippers, such a divorced dad team. And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, look around and you look around. It's all just guys with their kids for their one night of the week. And they're like, Hey pal, you want to go to a basketball the game? Lakers, Cause Lakers, I can't, the, the, the kids, I can't, the, the kids I can't are afford, miserable and disenfranchised. And they have no emotional Laker connection tickets. to their father. You, Cause you know, they only see him once a month, you know, I, it's, I, it's it's game. <laughs> yeah. I can't afford Laker tickets, but you can eat ice cream when we're there. And then you befriended that one fellow. Look, son, there's Walter McCarty and, uh, Catino Mobley, like not real, like NBA stars. Like, woo. Hey, Chris Kamen, let's see if you can get a Jersey in the gift shop of Chris Kamen. The kid's like, <laughs> I guess it's not exactly Kobe. But then all of a sudden Blake Griffin comes in and, and there's a clipper worth watching. He's going to be MVP. And he's a redheaded black man, which as you know is always my favorite thing. I did not know he was a redheaded black man. I, That's amazing. That, he's the guy I, in the dunk ter- Like as, Sam as, L. Deep Blue Sea style. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. It's a tough hustle. I, Fuck I grew that. up, I grew up Malcolm as a, I, X, I grew Malcolm up Red. as a, as a work. I grew up as a redheaded Caucasian woman. And, you look and, white. And I was, I was just relentlessly teased. So I cannot fathom being a black man. I think man when you're a black a redhead. redheaded guy, you have to not only embrace it, but like you have to step your blackness up. Like Delonte West is like the blackest guy in the world. I don't know who he plays for now because he moves all over the uh, league, but he's the guy. I think he's in Japan now. No, I just heard him on the radio. So oh. maybe the Mavericks. YouTube Delonte West Donuts and you'll see. Some of the most pimping, gangsterous stuff you've ever seen in your like. Apparently, he was doing a Jim Rome is burning correspondence piece, and you know, basically, Jim Rome gives the athlete the camera and the mic, and they just walk around. And he goes, you know, ordinarily where I come from, uh, snitches get stitches, but you know, we're supposed to make the rookies go get us donuts. I ain't no donuts in here today, Jim. And he goes up to the rookie. This is when he was on the Cavaliers. He goes up to the donut. Uh, he goes up to Ed. Somebody on the Cavaliers. And he goes, hey, man, what's with the donuts today, man? What's going on? And the kid goes like – he had like literally had a torn ACL. So he was actually getting treatment at a doctor. And he goes, I was getting my treatment on my knee. And he goes, man, planes, trains, automobiles. You better have my donuts. <laughs> it's one of the greatest That's things awesome. of all time. So I think – And he obviously cares deeply about pastry. <laughs> yes. I think if you're a redheaded black man, you either take it up a notch – or you live in, or, or you like, shave your head. Well, Malcolm X like took it up a notches. Or you could dye your hair super red, like carrot top red. Oh, carrot top. He, he's he might be my person of the year. Yeah. No. You know he's like no one gets more chicks than carrot. Top. I know, and I I I cannot stop asking you about this. How many chicks does d- does carrot top get? Well, I call him Scott. You guys are close for a showbiz. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, first of all, you gotta understand, Carrot Top has been the most money making guy. Let me rephrase that like a person. Carrot Top has been like one of the biggest money makers for like 30 years. It, when we were all doing colleges, he was doing like six in a row. And when I would make $700 for a college, he was making $7,000 for a college because he was just, he would sell out like in giant gymnasiums at colleges. So back then, I'm talking like 92, uh, he would get so many chicks. He, if it wasn't two at a time, it didn't interest him. Isn't I'm not that amazing? kidding. 
And, my, and, I'm, and I'm like, does he, and what do they, I mean, they want to go home and sleep with him or does he use them as like props? Like, chicks like, love what's props. going on? I'm sure he. Chicks love props. Chicks love props. Never I'm sure at some part of the evening they are being used as a prop, a sexual prop. A like, sexual prop or do you think that he's like. Like, look, I'll take your temperature. I'll just stick this in your hole. Do you, th- do you think he has, <laughs> do you think he has like an oversized thermometer? Like. Like, I think that's what he calls his dick. Yeah, I bet he has oh, a giant. It, really? Fa- I have no idea, but I'm hoping he does. And what's even more horrific is that you're talking. 